All right, folks, so here's what I'm going to be doing next. Uh, we've got this uh, span here uh, pinned at this end. Uh, it's got a cable that's applying a force at an angle, 30 degree angle here. And it's got this distributed force of 70 pounds per feet uh, between, here, uh, between the end and where this other pinned connection connects to uh, this bracket here at C. So let's go ahead and have a look at that. Uh, so uh, first things first, uh, uh, for uh, rest restating what I'm doing for the problem, trying to find the internal loads and the reactions for the structure shown. And then what we're going to be doing here is we are going to be starting off with a, an IDLI structure. So we got the, the structure here, just replacing, you know, a, a, Basically, in this instance, kind of just redrawing because, you know, the uh, the drawing that we looked at was already kind of in the form of the idealized structure. <coughs> but yeah, we got that. We got our diagrams, and probably set with a free body diagram. Um, so we've got the uh, forces, the loads applied, and we've got our reaction forces here. <coughs> okay, so uh, one thing to keep in note. Uh, this member CB here, that is a, uh, there is a two force member. So we are only going to be worried about it in tension or compression. It's only going to have axial forces or vice versa. Uh, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to be carrying any shear. It's not going to be, it's not going to have bending load. Uh, so that uh, does simplify things. Uh, we, for trying to figure out uh, the, the reactions, uh, we need to take our 75 uh, pound per foot uh, uh, distributed load here, res figure out what that uh, resultant is. Uh, so th that ends up being a 300 pound load once we take that multiplied out by the, by the four feet. <coughs> So that's a 300 pound load, obviously centered right about, obviously centered right here. Uh, so that'll be, uh, you know, two feet from the end. So, um, and uh, I also broke up uh, this, uh, this weight into its horizontal and vertical components. So uh, just based upon the angles uh, given, we've got uh, our, uh, <coughs> Sorry, we've got the uh, uh, vertical component at uh, 129.9 pounds. We've got the horizontal component at 75 pounds. So here's a free body diagram just of that member that we're looking at. And oh, what do we do to solve for the reactions for that? Well, we can take a moment about A. So a moment about this point here. Uh, we know that uh, if it's in equilibrium, uh, the, the moment uh, needs to be zero. So I'll just go ahead and add, here I shall scroll, st st straddle the pages here so we can kind of look up. So our, mo our total moment is going to be just, I've got the seven foot span times our 129.9 uh, pounds. Uh, that's a, and uh, that's going to be at, uh, that's a negative uh, 129 pounds, so it's going to be a negative moment. Obviously, it's working in that direction. We have our <coughs> uh, we have our, our uh, 300 pound force acting at five feet. Uh, so that uh, and again negative. It's a three th three the sign on that 300 pounds is negative, so that. Uh, uh, that ends up working out to be a negative uh, a moment, and of course both of those make sense because from measured from right, measured from this pin here, both those are going to be causing clockwise rotation, and that's a that's a negative moment. And then we've got our three pound, uh, sorry, a three foot span here uh, before we get to uh, to the pin from CB. Uh, so. Three feet times the force in the y direction at B. So uh, that allows us uh, 
to relatively easy solve for FYB, just add these add these to the other side of the equation, divide by three feet, and that'll give us uh, 803.1 pounds. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, we do know that, like I said, we do know that it's a two force member, so that'll be in tension only. Uh, geometry is a three, four, five triangle. Uh, so essentially we can easily solve for what the total actu actual tension is. The total tension uh, uh, along that member is uh, three, uh, you know, what we got times five, five, uh, five over four. That gives us uh, uh, 1,004 pounds. Uh, and we could solve for the X component of that of that force, uh, which is also going to be the same as the uh, X component of at, at the reaction here. Uh, so that'll be uh, uh, that, that'll be. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, it is the same magnitude as that, but that'll be uh, uh, 602.3 in the negative direction, again, because this force here, it's actually going to be acting in this direction, so it'll be negative. So, uh, the reactions at A, uh, in order to uh, find those, uh, uh, simple enough, we just uh, take our uh, this, uh, the equilibrium of our forces. So we got our uh, sum of the total forces in the x direction. That's equal to zero. And uh, again, we've, on, we've only got a couple uh, things there. We've got the uh, got the FXA. Now uh, we've got the uh, as, as the, the 602 uh, again acting uh, to the that, that one's acting pulling to the uh, to the left so that's negative and then we've got the 75 pounds as the horizontal component of our tension from the cable all uh, that's equal to zero that gives us our FXA of 527.3 same deal for the F FY components we've got this one here Got this one here. Got these two negative ones. Uh, so that plus that minus that minus that is equal to zero. Uh, relatively easy to solve for that. Uh, so it ends up being uh, negative three thirty three seventy three point two pounds. I forgot to put my unit there. That's pound. <laughs> uh, then we got there. So. Uh, now that we've got our uh, loads there, uh, sorry, our reactions, we can essentially solve for, we, we can draw the diagrams then. We've got enough information to draw our, uh, to draw our, our diagrams here. So uh, for our normal internal load. Uh, so again, we know that the, we know that this is a two force member. It only has a normal component to it. It doesn't have any shear. It doesn't have any bending moment. And we had found what that, uh, and it's constant along its length. We'd found that it's a thousand and four pounds. Uh, then uh, just essentially starting from, starting from here, uh, we're going to have, uh, the, uh, total, <clears throat> Uh, the total compression in this section of the span, that's just going to be equal to the force that is uh, applied by by the X component of the reaction at A. That's, you know, that's applied there and stays at that amount until we get to here. And then all of a sudden we've got the X component of this force that uh, uh, alleviates that compression and overpowers it a little bit and and then that leaves us with a constant 75 uh, pounds of tension in this section of the span for axial and that's basically just to account for the horizontal component of that force okay uh, so 
Uh, like I said, uh, we don't have any, there's no torsion developed to, but anywhere on here. Uh, and since the CB has no shear bending uh, internal forces, uh, we're going to omit that from the from the diagrams just to kind of get it out of the way. Uh, so uh, just looking at a free body diagram of AD, uh, looking at the vertical components only, because uh, again we already accounted for the axial stuff. We're not worried about that, uh, and uh, the you know the the horizontal horizontal components aren't uh, aren't going to be causing any shear or aren't going to be causing any bending. Uh, so you know for for this for this portion we're not really worried about it. So uh, essentially, we've got our uh, initial uh, vertical reaction load uh, going on here. That's a negative three twenty three point two. Uh, so that that gives us an internal uh, shear of negative three uh, three seventy sorry three seventy three point two. And I'd just like to emphasize again uh, our based upon the sign convention uh, that we had art you know, that we had uh, established for the course um, if we're talking a positive internal shear that's a shear that would be causing the thing to be um, <clears throat> rotating counterclockwise sorry clockwise uh, so that's you know the opposite of what the situation is on here. If we take a tiny, if we take a little slice, you know, a slice, a slice of this section here, uh, essentially the shear portions are going to be causing that to want to be rotating uh, uh, counterclockwise instead. <clears throat> so this is a negative shear. Uh, stays constant until we hit uh, this section, this point here, at which point. Uh, uh, we suddenly jump up from a negative shear all the way up to a positive shear. The amount of that jump is uh, 803 pounds. So that, that brings us to a maximum amount of the shear on the diagram of uh, 429.9 pounds. And then it just drops linearly until we hit our uh, the end of our span here. Uh, and then it drops down to an amount of... Uh, 129.9 pounds. So that's you know, at the at the end at the end of this span here, the only shear that's there is caused by the vertical components of the uh, of the cable that's acting there. <clears throat> so that's our shear diagram. Uh, relatively simple. Um, the uh, bending moment diagram. Yeah, we obtained that just by integrating our shear diagram over the length. So we're, uh, we've got a pin connection here at A, so we know that there's uh, no moment going on there. Uh, we also know the same thing at the end of, uh, at the other end, at, e, at D. So we're starting at nothing and we're going back to nothing, just like life. <laughs> uh, so start at zero, increase linearly until we hit uh, until we hit this point here, and then uh, essentially uh, the magnitude of that, uh, uh, the magnitude of that, that's just based upon this value here times the span over which it works. Uh, so uh, 373.2 pounds times 3 feet gives us. Uh, 1120 pound feet. And then once we get back down here, uh, so uh, that, that's a negative uh, moment because at that, you know, at that, at that portion, essentially we're, and th well, throughout the entire section of this beam, you know, we've got uh, downward, downward loads at the ends and we're pushing, and we're pushing upward in the middle. So that's going to be caused, you know, that's, uh, the download loads at the end are pushing upwards in the middle, which is causing the entire structure to kind of flex 
like this. So again, based upon our sign convention, that's not causing a, a smiley face, that's causing a, a frowny face. So that all this entire section here is going to be uh, negative, is going to have an internal negative bending moment. But uh, we, we, we hit the maximum negative internal bending moment at this point, and then we and then the shear jumps up to a positive value, and that causes the shear to start, sorry, the bending moment to start increasing again until we get to, uh, until essentially we hit zero. Uh, so the shape of this line, uh, that's going to be a combination. Uh, yeah, if we, if, we had, if we had just a linear, uh, let's, let's kind of, here, let, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's mirror this and assume that we are kind of starting from something. So essentially, if we had just, if we had just this portion, uh, then essentially it'd be starting from zero uh, and increasing linearly. If we had just this portion, uh, then it would be, you know, start, starting slowly, working up, working up, getting up faster because we're, because, uh, you know, it's a, that'll be a, a quadrat, uh, you know, a, you know, a second, a, a second order polynomial uh, function there. That'll be, um, so essentially this shape here is the combination of those two shapes added together. So you can't, you can't just kind of, uh, uh, so I, I guess essentially that the when at this end the slope isn't zero, you do have a certain amount of the slope starting based upon the fact that you uh, have this linear portion here, and it uh, ensures that uh, you know it uh, you're starting off uh, at uh, the, the 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 bending moment increases at a non-zero rate at that point. Because, because at no point along here is the shear actually zero. So it's a, the bending moment's changing, changing at a non-zero rate across the entire thing. So if, 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 you, if you had gone and drawn this shape as something that was, uh, that looked a bit more like a uh, quadratic equation flipped around if it, if it had looked more like that with kind of a zero slope here a zero slope here at the end then that would be incorrect and that is about that see you folks